Hi everyone, so Celeste here with Sotheby's and I am here today with Emily Nauer and thank you for joining us today, Emily. Of course, thank you for having me. Absolutely, I'm glad we were able to make this happen. So Emily is with us from Creativities Studios and uh, some of you out there will know that I'm a mom, I have two little kids and we actually ended up connecting because I was scouting out places for potentially my kids to take some tap, um, potentially jazz, some things that I actually wasn't seeing at other studios, and we're still trying to make this happen, but I just wanted to get that out there quickly. Um, so tell us a little bit about your background, what brought you to creating Creativity Studios, and anything you think would be nice for us to share with the audience. Sure, so it's quite an interesting story. I actually have a background in fashion. Okay. So I graduated from college, I went to FIT, I was working in fashion for a number of years, switched to marketing, and then really wanted to do something that was more um, like something that I could help people with. Mm -hmm. So I could work with kids, but do I want to be a teacher? I'm not sure. So then I thought about, well, what are the skills that I have from growing mm -hmm. up? So I danced from age three through college Okay. and thought, you know, maybe I could teach dance. And then the pandemic happened and someone had asked me if I had, if I knew anyone who taught classes for kids virtually. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't, I don't know anyone who does that, but I could probably do that. Mm -hmm. And so then I decided, you know, why don't I offer dance classes for children because that's yeah. what I've done growing up. I taught at my studio growing up from age 12 until I graduated and I've always loved to dance and I have a genuine love for kids as well. Yeah. Awesome. So it just kind of worked out and I built my website. Mm -hmm. I went on Kid Pass. I went on Sawyer and started getting clients mm -hmm. and then I had a pretty big following. We have like 500 five-star reviews on Kid Pass. That's a lot of reviews. Yeah. That's like, that really yeah. shows it. Yeah. It's great. No, it's really yeah. nice. And I used to like read them and tear up because yeah. they were so sweet. And yeah. it's, but it, it's really a testament to, you know, once you find something you love, mm -hmm. I hate to be like cliche, but you like sure. never work a day in your life, you know, yeah. once you find something you really love. Yeah. And so that's how it started. And then everyone got vaccinated, especially in New York. Mm -hmm. And I started offering in-person classes. Mm -hmm. So now all of our classes are in person. We still have a few virtual classes, but the majority of our schedule are classes that are all over the city. Um, and so we offer a variety of different locations because we come to you. That's awesome. So, yeah. yeah. Which I know like as a mom certainly makes things a lot easier too mm -hmm. because one of the things that's hard is sometimes trying to figure out like how to schlep your child yeah. from point A to point B yeah. or have your nanny schlep your child. Um, and sometimes there isn't a class right in the neighborhood mm -hmm. that you want to have one in. So I know one of the things that we were talking about is even creating like the, you know, the dance pods or like yes. a, a class where if you have space and you're able to just open up your living room, mm -hmm. um, that you can actually turn that into a dance studio. Exactly. There's no reason why you can. Yeah. So. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And it doesn't need to upset your neighbors either because you can, you know, there's there's things that you do that like ballet is very soft shoe. Yep. Um, and I'm sure there's right. creative ways for like tap and jazz and other things like that to put a yep. mat down. So exactly. um, just some of the things that I thought about a little bit um, when we were chatting too. Yeah. So, and now I know we talked a little bit about like um, locations, the flexibility, that's really what kind of sets you guys apart. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, like types of dance that you offer, did you, I know I named some, but yeah. I'll let you kind of reiterate sure. those if you want as well. Of course, no problem. So yes, um, what sets us apart is definitely the fact that we can travel to you, we can have classes in your home. We truly don't need that much space. Mm -hmm. um, especially for the classes for like ages two to six, mm -hmm. even we do some pods for ages like one to two. Okay. It's more play-based. 
those aren't as much of like a strict dance focus. They're a little bit more play-based, sensory mm -hmm. play. Okay. Um, but we don't really need that much space. And then, yes, you're right. Like you said, you can put down a mat. You can put down... There's like different little, there's different types of flooring that you can get on like Amazon. And sure. It's really easy to make it yeah. work. Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, if you have a building lounge or a building yeah, a common room. area, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So those work really well too. Um, in terms of types of dance, of course, we have ballet, mm -hmm. classic. Yeah. Um, we offer tap, we offer jazz, we offer hip hop. Um, we also do do musical theater, and then we have some arts and crafts classes, and okay. we can do private culinary arts classes as well. Oh. So there's a lot of options. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I realized you yeah. did the culinary arts stuff too. Mm -hmm. So, so with that, and I'm going to ask a few like extra questions now. Of like, course. With that, yeah. what like what do you? Is it kind of making cookies? Is it you yep. know like little things like that where you're getting the kids to where it's almost like a I guess it's a craft, but you're actually going to bake yeah. the product at the end of the day. Of so, course. Yeah. Yes. So what we'll do is we would use your kitchen, of course. Mm -hmm. um, sure. We would have all the ingredients, and then we'll plan the recipe. So I would okay. coordinate with you in advance. You know, what mm -hmm. recipe do you want to do for the kids this week? I would give you a few ideas. You okay. could choose. Um, we're always open to working with, like, dietary restrictions and mm -hmm. allergies because I know sure. they're very common these days. Yeah. So we can work around those, no problem. And then we would walk through the recipes step by step with the kids and make them interact and okay. do and actually nice. cook or bake. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah, so it could be yeah. a dessert, which is fun, you know, baking. Yeah. Or you could, we could do a recipe. So I've done that with a lot of different kids, ages, I'd say between like four is usually a good okay. place to start, mm -hmm. three or four, because they can start to help. Okay. Yep. Um, and then, you know, we try to keep them engaged by making them really be a part of the process. Yeah, I have to get better about that because, like, we made tacos the other day, <laughs> and the kids had made tacos at school, and they really wanted to help us with this. Mm -hmm. But I'm so used to just doing it yeah. that mm. I was not quite as good at engaging them and they kept saying can yeah. we help can we do this and I'm thinking but that's going to no. slow me down but yeah. that's not the point of this. So yes. <laughs> no that's exactly yeah. right. I think it's very hard as a parent. Um, I have a baby but he's mm -hmm. obviously not cooking with me yet because he's eight months old. Soon. Soon yeah maybe in a few months. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the hardest part as a parent like you're you have so much to do you just want to cook and be done with it and move yeah. on, you know, and serve the food and then be like, I have to go do work. I want to go to the gym or yeah. you have an appointment or something to do. So mm -hmm. you're so busy and you don't want to like take the time and go step by step. Yes. It's very hard. Yeah. Believe me, I know it's very yeah. hard. And you have to be very patient, mm -hmm. but we really make the children participate. So yeah. we're like, okay, it's your turn to do the measuring of the flour. Now you can do the stirring of the sauce, you know, yeah. so everyone has something they're doing, yeah. which really keeps them engaged too, because it's easier for them to be like, well, I'm not helping. I'm just going to like walk away and yeah. play with a toy or something. Yeah, no, but it's, so. but it's important because I think it's part of like the long-term thing that you want them to, and this is something I have to remember, and I do not have your patience when it comes okay. to children, um, <laughs> even my own okay. sometimes, but it's I hard. think it's it's part of that process of like you want them to help later on, yeah. so if you slowly mm -hmm. are teaching them to want to help, to be engaged in the process, then hopefully you end up with the teenager that wants to help make dinner and is, you know, actually a, a resource in the kitchen rather than the teenager that is sitting on the couch doing their own thing and just demanding that you put food in front of them. So, like, yeah. that's kind of where my brain on goes. On the iPad or whatever. Yeah, yeah, to, like, what's important and why, even though we want to just rush through that process, mm -hmm. like, it's good to make them feel involved yeah. and engaged for the long run. So, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But you're right. You have to, you also kind of have to know how to, like, how to interact with 
kids. And, you know, for parents like myself out there who didn't have a lot of child experience prior to having my own, mm -hmm. I think it's also sometimes good to watch how someone else is interacting with your children because it yep. can teach you things to do differently mm -hmm. that would be hard. To, it's like subtle things that would be hard to come up with on your own. So. Yeah, definitely. You yeah. might not have ever thought about it. Yeah. Like it's not something you've seen. It's not something you've read. Yeah. You just haven't even thought about it. And like the way someone speaks to your child or mm -hmm. offers to have them help in this way then you're like, oh, that makes sense. And that worked. I'll implement that. that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. That worked. Find what worked and mm -hmm. then try to, uh, you know, yeah, recreate that on your yep. own time with them. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, this was great. Um, I'm really glad that we got to learn a little bit more about Creativity Studio and even a couple of things that I didn't realize you did. Um, I yeah. think you guys do birthday parties and stuff like that sometimes yes, too, right? Yes, we do. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so for birthday parties, we will offer a package. So you can do okay. an entertainment package where you have an instructor come and mm -hmm. do a bunch of different dance games and okay. you know, they can also teach the kids a like routine if you if they're into that, like if they really love dance and that's yeah. something they want for their birthday, mm -hmm. which we have a lot of kids who like that. Yeah. And then we can also do a craft because okay. or a few um, I recently did a unicorn birthday party, okay, so I taught them a whole dance routine, did the yeah. warm up, did the cool down, did some games, yeah. and then we did a bunch of unicorn crafts. Uh, so the kids okay. love that. And Very I actually cute. did, we do like offer a full service package as well, where we would help with the setup, with okay. the breakdown, so just be like a helping hand overall for the entire party. Sure, so then you guys bring mm -hmm. everything in yep. to be able to coordinate that. Exactly, okay. yep, bring all I the mean, supplies. I mean, that's huge, because yeah. it's enough just trying to get your child there sometimes, let I know. alone oh. do the rest of the stuff, so. <laughs> it's a lot, there's so yeah. many, and it's easy to forget that. something, you know, yeah. so. Absolutely, yep. and then you can actually engage in the party more and enjoy it if you have someone additional being able to help you out too, yep. so. That's right. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, so so my last question, and always like my favorite question, is um, what is, if you had to pick one spot in New York City, what would you say is your favorite spot in New York? Okay. That is so hard. <laughs> All right. So I would say that my favorite spot in New York City would be, this is probably very common, but I love Central Park. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you can go and do just such a wide variety of different things at Central Park. You can go and read by yourself. Mm -hmm. Something I used to do when I was 20 years old, when yeah. I didn't have the money to go out and do anything like And you crazy. had time to read, probably. Yes, I, <laughs> yeah. I know. And now <laughs> someone asked me the other day, yeah. like, what book are you reading? I'm like, what What do you mean, what I, book? Yeah, I honestly I like, miss reading. I, like, if somebody asked me that, I'd be like, an yeah. email. Email. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't, email. I read yeah. emails. That's what I read. Doesn't count, but yeah. No. So I remember, I was just thinking, and I'm like, you know, I remember going to Central Park, and I would sit and read and just, like, lay out on a Saturday or yeah, Sunday. Yeah, totally. And then you can also, and then you see all these families there, you know? So then yeah. you can go with your family, you can go bike riding, you can just go on a walk. Yeah. You know, just get a change of scenery from the city that we live in, which tends to be a lot of buildings yeah. and cars and taxis and things. So yeah. I just love that there's so much you can do there. You can have a birthday party there. Mm -hmm. We've had classes there. We've also had birthday parties there. Okay, nice. Yeah, so we've yeah. taught tons of classes in Central Park. Mm -hmm. Outdoors, we've had other children's birthday parties in Central Park. I just feel like it's such a wonderful part of the city. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, it feels, it can feel kind of, I feel like it, it could feel large while you're there, mm -hmm. but it's really not, it doesn't take up that much of our city. Yeah. But when you're there, you don't worry about anything else going on. You're yeah. just like focused. It's, on, a, it's a different vibe. You've got really the trees, is. you have yeah. nature, mm -hmm. you have the zoo. The zoo. Yeah, mm -hmm. the kids went to the zoo on mm -hmm. Monday actually. Yeah. So yeah, they love the zoo. It's like just big enough to make it very doable when you have yes. little kids that's too. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great that's spot. And there's so many different areas of Central Park. We're guilty of not exploring it I enough. Know. Um, I know. And 
and yeah absolutely but the birthday party thing is a great idea or even creating like a dance pod yep. in the park over the summer you've got the kids outside mom and dad and other parents can potentially sit and have a drink totally relax for yeah. a minute and you have someone else keeping the children active for a little bit yep. i think that's a really i just had another idea so yeah awesome no, it's so true it's yeah. great great well thank you so much for sharing that with us and um, anyone out there, if you're having trouble in terms of, you know, finding that perfect class for your kids and, you know, other parents that are interested as well, um, feel free to contact Emily. We'll put her contact information below. Creativity Studio, they come to you. So it doesn't matter where in the city you are. Right. Um, they can certainly make sure that there's a class that suits your needs. So, all right. Awesome. Great. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. Bye.